What's up, guys? Welcome to the Invictus Mindset Podcast. Today's guest is a close friend. She moved here all the way from Florida this year, and we are stoked to have her. She's a two times CrossFit Games athlete and the winner of the Titan Games, Miss Danny Spiegel. Welcome to the show, yo. Thank you. We've been chatting about this for a while, and we I'm have. really excited that we are able to make this happen. Same. You've and been avoiding me for a while. I've been avoiding you. <laughs> I got dressed up today. I see. You know, I see. I, I, I didn't get the memo. I would have tie dyed it or something. I, I tried to get fancy. I think it's uh Can a, everyone see his jorts? Can you see these things? <laughs> They're nice and stretchy for you. I had to I had to rock the jorts just because of your affiliation with Born Primitive. I felt like it was necessary. It was necessary. Appreciate <laughs> it. So before we unpack your story, I, I want to share something with you that I think is very, very cool. And you you do this purposely and it makes me a huge fanboy, and that is you're incredibly authentic, right? When you look at Instagram, it's really easy to be like, I'm going to put on this facade. I'm going to be this, this pseudo uh, celebrity, this person that competes in this sport, and I'm going to show you what I think you want to see of me, but you don't do that. You're unapologetically yourself. Thank where you. did Where did that kind of come from? I think it just came from when I first started my whole – journey into better mental health and better self-love. I just started kind of documenting my process and only posting what I wanted to post on Instagram. I had it as my own diary in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I just always never wanted to change that. I always wanted it to be something that I would look back on and love every single thing that I posted. And so moving forward into making it a business, I just kept to that. I just would let people know, like, I do not represent, post about, talk about anything that I wouldn't do just naturally. And so uh, it's just been something that resonated with me immediately and forever. So I just, why I just, what I do uh, for a big part of my day. So I want to enjoy it and I want it to feel authentic. So yeah, I, I really, really love that about you. You know, it, it, it's very, it, it's made it like a seamless transition. Right. When somebody comes, you know, brand new into the gym, which we've seen, you know, I've been at Invictus for almost seven years now. And it's like people come and go around competition season and you never know exactly the version of the person you're going to get, especially when competition, you know, rolls around and your work ethic, your energy, both of those things combined with your enthusiasm, your passion, like having both you and your boyfriend, Alex, here has been an absolute gift for us. Oh. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. We feel exactly the same way. It's been wonderful coming here. It's been eye-opening and a blessing for us as well. Very cool. So, you know, everybody knows you as this, like, amazing CrossFit Games athlete. They get to see, you know, your your love of food, your love of fitness, your love of adventure, and your love for your beautiful dog, Kona. But before we kind of unpack that, I want to know a little bit about, like, your story and your upbringing leading to that. And so what, what was your childhood kind of like? Where did you grow up? And, you know, how did you find your way into sport and fitness? Uh, so I did the first nine years of my life in Houston, Texas, and then I moved to Colorado. Uh, and I think that's really where it kind of exploded. Um, spent so much of my childhood outside, running around the woods, playing with all sorts of critters. And my parents were very much advocates of just being active and hiking, camping, kayaking, river rat I mean, you name it, we were doing it. And I grew up doing gymnastics and then bounced around from sport to sport until I found CrossFit. So it's always been something that's been ingrained in my life, whether it's just outdoor activities, fitness, sports, like I've been active. And the biggest thing that my dad really taught me growing up was like, he'd always ask me like, are you having fun? Like, I love that. is your life fun? Like, you know, you're in school, you're doing this, blah, 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 but are you having fun? You know, are you smiling every day? And so that's something that I've just kept with my, you know, with my brand, with my life. And so growing up with that in my mind, am I having fun? It was pretty easy just to have fun and do the outdoor stuff and the fitness and the sports all just came. And that, that was fun for me. That's so. very cool. I love that you spent a lot of time outside too, right? Like you look at Dogs, you look at nature. Those are two things that's like if we get lost in this rat race of life, we'll always like center us and ground us. And I think it's very cool that that was a, a huge part of your foundation. Yeah. And so kind of playing in Colorado, you mentioned a little bit of gymnastics. How, how does that kind of serve you now? Right. Like that enhances body awareness at such a young age. 
you're exposed to a lot of different things. What did your gymnastics practice kind of look like? Uh, so I did it competitively for over 10 years. Okay. And so like you said, the body awareness, I, of all the things I did as a kid, I, I just, I think my lucky star is that I started gymnastics because it's made everything so much easier. Not just like in the sense of CrossFit or anything, but trying new things. Like when I go and try new things with friends. Like I remember the first time I went like wakeboarding, I felt so comfortable. And it's just like, that's something that really stuck out in my mind is like, I, I pick up new things fairly quickly and the, like and not being conceited at all. Like it's very, very much like things come very natural to me in a physical sense. So I love that I can just try new things with confidence. It makes life more fun. Mm-hmm. So that's great. Uh, and then coming into CrossFit, you know, there's a lot of gymnastics movements, so that made it easy. And then also just on the weightlifting side, like having body awareness and knowing where your body is mm-hmm. in rel- you know, in relation to a snatch and a heavy barbell going over your head, also very helpful. So it has, Rudy it from, served my life. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think Rudy from uh, the Outlaw Way used to call it barbell gymnastics. Yeah, ex- and, that's and exactly what it is. In theory, they're, they're very similar. There's that straight arm strength, right, which we typically see, you know, like in the closing phase of a bar muscle up, which leads to the bent arm strength. And mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting how the hip plays a role there. And like, they definitely play off of each other very, very well. Yeah. Um, you were in gymnastics starting at what age? Oh, like before I was even like walking, I was kind of just like rolling on, you know, gymnastics mats. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Just like a mom and me like tumbling type yeah. thing. Very cool. Uh, so immediately I was, I have pictures of me like, you know, naked in diapers, like mm-hmm. on a balance beam. That's so cool. yeah, it started off very early. <laughs> One of the things that I wanted to unpack a little bit with you, and I think we see it kind of coming from the gymnastics world is like, when you look at the attire that, that women wear in gymnastics, it's very revealing at a young age. Right. And, you know, for, for better or worse. Right. No judgment. But it, but that is just the nature of the sport. How does that kind of enhance your confidence at a young age where it's like you're presenting, you know, a certain routine? You're being judged based off of lines, but also like your psychological wherewithal. Right. We see it in the CrossFit space all the time. Somebody will come in. They lack the, the, the body confidence. They train for a little bit. They understand nutrition. They, they get connection with the co- community. And th- then what do we say the, see the next week? This development of like, you know, a little, maybe a little bit less clothes, maybe tighter clothes. And like, it, it, it's, it's magical to watch, really. How did that kind of foster that mindset for you at a young age as you kind of developed and how you utilize your brand to help empower women? I think at a young age, you know, it doesn't impact you in the same way. In a young age, it just makes it so you're around it. Mm -hmm. It's not that something that's so shocking. So when people who grow up kind of like more sheltered or, you know, you know, guys or something like that, they start seeing, you know, more and more skin. It starts to become like a, whoa, like a taboo type of subject. But growing up, like it was just something that was okay. Mm -hmm. And I think it was great because I think we should look at the human body as, you know, a piece of art, like, you know, sculptors sculpted the body for years and years and years. And we looked at it as art and not until very recently in the grand scheme of like history, did we start really, really, really grossly sexualizing Mm -hmm. the body. And I think like that, you know, growing up around, you know, appreciating what a powerful body was like helped. And then I got into like later years where, the toxicity of like college and, you know, mean people and all that kind of stuff broke that down. And I had to remind myself of all of that. So I think growing up around it was so beneficial because I was able to find that like Mm -hmm. later, but it's just one of those things where, you know, people say it all the time where, you know, you hold off on something like you, they say, you know, people with alcohol, they're not allowed to have it till they're 21. All of a sudden they hit 21, they go wild, Mm -hmm. but in different cultures, you know, sip a wine here and there. And then by the time they're 21, it's like, yeah, yeah. Like whatever. And so it's just a healthier mindset. So I think that's the, the, it's kind of like the same concept is I just think people should be introduced to it earlier on. And so it's not like, you know, you hit a certain age and it's like sexualizing everything. Yeah, of course. And and I think, you know, exposing you to it at a young age definitely calloused that, that psychological component a little bit. Yeah. The, the reason why I ask is because I feel like someone in your shoes is definitely receiving weird messages from people on Instagram nonstop. And, and you've documented some of those before. I'm sure people say certain things. 
what kind of blockades do you kind of put on and how do you kind of filter that? And, you know, at that young age, as you were developing, did your parents kind of help you with that a little bit? Could, could they foresee the potential of that happening? Because it's, it's really easy for me to be over here and say like, you know, oh yeah, she's too focused on the craft. You know, she, she, she's got, you know, her ducks in a row, but it's, it, it, you're a human, right? At the end of the day, you're a human and, you know, things that people say and do are, are inevitably going to affect all of us in some capacity. How have you done such a great job, like, managing that? I think it's kind of, you know, you go into it with, like, horse blinders on. Mm -hmm. And I stay out of my I stay out of my comment section because, like, that's where some, some things just get mean. Yeah. Um, you know, the typist heroes out there who just want to, like, put all of their... Those keyboard warriors. Mm -hmm. um, keyboard warriors. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> typist heroes. I, I think I'm going to start. I'm going to start that one. That's a typist new heroes. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, you know, you just have to go in kind of just open-minded and realize that with the good, you're always going to get the bad. Mm -hmm. And you got to focus on the positive. And like you said, hum like I'm human. So every once in a while, you know, I see the comment, I see the, you know, the DM, and I'm like, oh, that one, that one stung. <laughs> you're just like, okay. But, but you do such a great job of like finding the humor in it which i think is so so cool you have what else are you gonna do you have to be able to laugh at this you have That's to be cool. able to laugh at these situations and i think the biggest turning point for me with that was just realizing the type of people that are sending me these things is like i i used to just ignore it and just like you know delete it or ignore the comment and just whatever and then there was a period of time where i started going to the person's profile and i started looking at these people and either they they're literally no profile picture. They are there just to like, you know, get out some pent up frustration on whatever is going on in their yeah, life. At the end of the day, hurt people, hurt people. Exactly. And so, and you have to realize that those people are just going through it. They're mm -hmm. going through something that is obviously terrible and they probably hate themselves more than they'll ever hate me. And you have to find just some compassion mm -hmm. and then you get the really weird ones. You're like, you also have to find some compassion. Something's going yeah. on there too. So you just kind of have to like let it go and just laugh at it. Cause like, that's all you can do at the end of the day. There's no response that I can do to that person or to the world. Unfortunately, right now, that's going to change. Like there's nothing I'm going to say. And they're going to be, Whoa, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. Um, that's in a that gift though, like your ability to separate and view these scenarios from a bird's eye view seek understanding rather than judging them back, which has zero return on investment. And I think that takes such an elevated level of maturity that brings out curiosity in me where I'm just like, how does she do this? And I think, I, I think it's very cool, like how you're able to do it on a consistent basis. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, like if you're getting it every single day, it gets old. Right, it's like you know, giving giving somebody a fifty cal echo bike sprint every day. Eventually, you're just gonna be like, "Fuck this! I don't want to do this anymore." Eventually, you're just gonna laugh and be like, "Okay, here we go." All right. I <laughs> <Fuck>. love it. <laughs> so, um, and you hit like you'll, you'll hit those fifty cals at different intensities. Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll go for it. Sometimes you'll just kind of like glide through and be like, "This is my life right now." Yep. And that's kind of this is the same thing. Is yeah, it does come every single day, and so I just you got to find the humor in it or. You know, I, I create little stories. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so, you know, Fred today had a really bad day. <laughs> <laughs> His wife hates him. You know, he woke up and like the dog, you like shit everywhere. And like, he's just like, I hate this girl. <laughs> like, I like he this. sees me and my cute dog and he's just like, oh God, she's got a cute dog. So I'm just going to ruin her day. And yeah, I, I just create this. little stories. And That's so good. Yeah. I, I, think, <laughs> I think your ability to, to utilize mindset is one of the huge benefits that you have as as not just a woman in the world but also you know within the competitive space and so you had this amazing outdoorsy kind of upbringing you were in gymnastics for 10 years and then I believe you found volleyball next yeah so I did I did diving next okay. I did like some diving and like just really like for fun um it reminded me a lot of gymnastics you know flipping through the air uh, then I did like volleyball and track. I, I even gave softball one day. Okay. Couldn't, couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I did, I bounced around a lot, a lot. And then going into college, I revisited volleyball and I was, you know, touring colleges to go on scholarship. And then a rowing coach reached out and was like, 
Hey, just happened to see like your profile. Um, you look like you have strong legs, literally the opening line. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, we would love to have you come row. And in my head, you know, I really, in hindsight, should have done more research on like what it really meant to like be on a crew team. Mm-hmm. But I was like, oh my God, I'm just going to go play in boats and we're going to go <laughs> row, row, row. And he was talking about how there are dolphins and we go and like play with the dolphins and the row next to them. sold you well. Sold me well. And then all of a sudden, you know, I get there and he's like, all right, guys, we're going to wake up at 3.30 a.m. You're going to run to the boathouse. We're going to get in this. And I'm like, 3.30? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then that all happened. I lasted one year crying every single day. I was like, mom, I am so tired. And she was like, I know. <laughs> so after that, I stopped. Mm-hmm. I lasted one year but loved the experience. Looking back on it is great. I mean, we are on the ergs all the time in CrossFit and I, I know how to sit on the rower and suffer. So mm-hmm. it's great. It's helped me in my current situation. But yes, I lasted a year of that. Then I went back and did some sand volleyball, did some track, and then I found CrossFit senior year of college. So I bounced around a lot until mm-hmm. I finally, finally found my home. It's such a great base though. The body awareness associated with gymnastics yes. plus, plus the upper body strength, right? Like Alex and I, your, your boyfriend, who's an amazing programmer, incredibly smart, have, he and I have chatted a lot about like a missing element in the sport of CrossFit for women is upper body strength. Yeah. And, and you see it, you know, lower body strength, you see great squatting, you see great, you know, Olympic lifts. Give him a bench press. Yeah. <laughs> but bench press, yeah. you know, lacks a little bit. And I think it's pretty cool that you had that foundation. You look at other G- CrossFit Games champions, you know, they're former gymnasts. They have very good upper body strength. I mean, you look at Tia. She's amazing with regards to upper body strength and, and strength endurance as yeah. well. And so, <laughs> I mean, there, there's definitely, the yeah, for sure. <laughs> there's definitely a lot of correlation there. And so uh, another thing that I kind of unpacked just from listening to you is just like the exposure to a wide variety of, uh, of stimuli, right? You have gymnastics, you have diving, you have softball, you have rowing, and then the, the element of waking up early, right? I, I feel like... Maybe at that time, everybody got a badge of honor for missing sleep. And it was like, oh, look at my work ethic, you know, when, when, when we're missing sleep and this, that, and the other. But then it's like you came to terms after, you know, waking up at 630 for a year and you're like, you know what? I actually don't want to do this anymore. This isn't <laughs> ever, good for ever me. again. <laughs> <laughs> so you get, you, I mean, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Right. So then you eventually, you expose yourself to those stresses and you're like, actually, I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so senior year of, of college, what, what did that kind of look like when you're like, all right, I'm done with these sports. How did you get your first flavor of CrossFit? And then kind of what happened after that? So... I had a friend who just was like, you have to try CrossFit. And he had tried so many times and was like, no, this is what I'm doing now. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that that's cool. <laughs> and finally just, you know, I got convinced to just go to my first CrossFit class and like the stereotypical story, you know, I show off, uh, show off, <laughs> show up really, you know, hesitant. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, you show up right when the other class is ending and everyone's like on the floor crying and sweating, throwing up. And you're like, where am I? (laughs) Like what kind of fight club have I walked into? And so you're just like, you're a little nervous. And then you, you know, you do your first class and you're just, it doesn't matter what kind of shape you are. You're in pain. It hurts so bad the first time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and (laughs) (laughs) um, um. (laughs) so, but it was like, that was it. You know, I went in and I did the thing everybody else does. I did my first class and I was immediately sold. I was like, this, this is what I've been searching for. Because since gymnastics, it was like there was, you know, a skill component, a strength component, like, you know, the mindset component and just the gruelingness of like the long hours in the gym for gymnastics. And I, I had missed like being challenged on so many different aspects and so I was like, this is it. Like, this is the, and I, I think that, you know, that, that, that night I went and bought, you know, I was like CrossFit apparel and I was like buying like the nanos and the knee sleeves and the belt. And I was like, I don't even know what these are, but it says <laughs> CrossFit on it. So I like, I drank the Kool-Aid, like I That's heavily cool. drank the Kool-Aid and it was just, it was all, it was just gone. It was just That's very cool. Do you remember what your first CrossFit workout was? No. All I know is that there was uh, wall balls and running. I can't even, I think there was another movement, but I think I blacked out Very cool. and I did the, you know, the thing where I walked in, I'm like, I'm fit. 
and I was not fit at all. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, you, you start like looking at everyone like in the class and you're like, all right, all right, this person looks like they're the fittest. So I'm going to, I'm going to chase this person Mm -hmm. mistake. It was like five rounds of something. And I honestly think that I was crying after the first round. (laughs) And I was like, these wall balls are like, and I think it was like heavy wall balls. And of course the coach is like, you know, like, no, like it's your first day. But of course I'm like, oh, no, no, sir. No, no, sir. It's not my first day. And so, yeah, I just, I got, I just, I don't even think I finished to be honest with you. I think I got capped and I was like, but you mm-hmm. went for it. Which I is, really which is did. Awesome. I sent it. I <laughs> really awesome. sent it. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> that that's very cool. So you find your way into CrossFit, but you're leaving, you know, college sports. How did, how did you, you know, fluctuate your identity there, right? Did CrossFit keep, keep the identity of like, I am an athlete. I am a strong, very empowered w- woman. Or was it more like, I'm doing this for fun. I'm doing this recreationally. Like, how did you associate like cognitively this, this new chapter and this new challenge? So CrossFit came into my life during a new chapter. So I had, my college years were tough. I had really bad experiences with myself internally, self-love, self-deprivation. I mean, I, I had a really bad relationship that was both, you know, abusive, like mentally and physically. And so I had just escaped that like right before I had found CrossFit. And so for me, the new chapter, it was like all wrapped into one is like, I needed to get out of a bad situation. I needed to fix myself. I needed to fix my mindset. I needed to find love for myself again. So I wasn't just sitting in a, you know, a pit of despair, you know, um, throwing myself like pity parties every day. It was just time to get it back together. And CrossFit helped me do that. It gave me so much confidence with just everything, you know, like the mindset thing. I had a new community. I, my body was changing in the ways that I wanted to see it. I started gaining more confidence and I started saying like, okay, well, I'm going to document this. Like, cause I've gone through some stuff and, and no one needs to know the gory details, but this is my transformation of my body. And then this is how that transformation also helped me transform my mindset. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of just wrapped all into one. So it wasn't as though like I needed to take my mindset from college into this. Like I needed to put all of that in the past. So it was already like starting a new chapter and just luckily it was also the chapter of CrossFit. That's very cool. I really appreciate you sharing that vulnerability with us. What would you, what advice would you give to somebody potentially going through the same thing as to like where to seek help or where to start, right? Like starting is sometimes the hardest thing because it seems so insurmountable. You know, how did you kind of narrow your mindset and compartmentalize like, all right, this is this is just the starting point of, you know, where I'd like to go. I think, you know, every situation is different, especially in something with an abusive relationship. If I if I don't know if that's what you were referring to, but that one is it's unfortunately I think it's more of it it's not like, you know, take these little steps here you get to a breaking point Mm -hmm. and I'm from my, you know, my experience, you start hearing, you know, friends and family getting concerned and you, you block it all out. And so you don't have like a support system anymore. It kind of like fades away uh, because you've pushed it away. Usually because like the abuser is like, don't listen to that. You know, it's just one thing after the other. So it's one of those things that eventually you come to your own breaking point And it is so sad that most of the time, like, that's what it takes because it's hard to seek help. And because of society and the way everything is set up, women don't really want to seek help in a lot of those aspects because we're already considered the weaker sex. So why are we just going to admit that we've got, you know, this other figure who is once again, like, making us weak and we can't break out of it? And then, of course, there's the whole thing where, women are like, okay, well you got abused, but what did you do to deserve the abuse? And so it's pretty toxic Mm -hmm. and it makes it so a lot of women, I feel like can't ask for help and they don't want to admit to their friends and their family that they need help. Mm -hmm. So I wish there was a better way, but for me, it just like, you know, I hit a day. It was just like a random, it was just a random day. And I just, you know, it was like a moment of clarity and I was like, I have to get out of it. Um, so my advice for women who are going through that is like, if you can seek help, seek it. If you're not ready to, 
then I always remembered what my dad said. Is like, are you having fun? And I started asking myself that. And I was like, none of this is fun. Mm -hmm. None of this is good for me. None of this is going to benefit me, you know, later. It benefited me in a way as, you know, mindset and perspective in life. But in the moment, nothing that was going on then was good for me. And so I just started like telling myself like every single moment of the day, I was like, was that good for me? Like, is this healthy for me? Am I in like, when's the last time I smiled? And so that, you know, those small little things that are going on to my head, I think led to the day where I was like, I am so done and I need to figure out a way to get out of it. Mm-hmm. So I, I love that you, you paused and you, you asked yourself questions. They, they seem very like very simple questions, right? We always say simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, but in that moment, it's, are you smiling? Who are you becoming? Where are you going? Are the choices that I'm making serving, you know, the ultimate goal that I'm trying to reach? And if, you know, part of those answers are like, I actually don't know where I'm going. I don't remember the last time I smiled. It's like, okay, let me press pause again. Let me self-reflect on the situation that I'm in. And if I need to break out, I got to break out. And it sounds like that's what you did. And I'm very proud of you for doing that because, you know, you, that choice seems like you made the rest of your life the best of your life. Yeah. Which it is was, very cool. It was a big turning point. Um, and it is the small questions. And it's like that with anything in life, I think. Like, even just if we're going to talk about, like, the CrossFit thing. If you're first day of CrossFit and you're already asking, how do I make it to the CrossFit games? You're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, your first day is like, okay, how do I, how do I just get better at this one movement? How do I make sure that I show up to the gym every single day? How do I make sure that like, I don't succumb to like the cravings of doing this and this and this, and I want to live the healthier life. So it's one of those things where in any aspect of life, no matter, you know, job wise, relationship wise, financial wise, business wise, you know, anything like if you're looking at that end result, typically it's not going to, it's hard. You can have it in the back of your mind, but if like, that's your only goal, if that's the only thing you've written on your notepad, it's not going to happen. You have to have the small questions and the small journey is the destination in theory. You know, we, we talk about, um, the famous author, James clear in his book, atomic habits. Mm -hmm. And it's like little things, right? Like you, you want to optimize your health, brush your teeth every day. Yeah. You want to decrease inflammation, take your fish oil. You want to optimize your happiness, serve other people or, you know, practice, you know, kindness. A small smile on the street could absolutely turn somebody's day. Yes. You know, little things. I I really appreciate you you sharing those things. What does it mean to you to be a strong woman and to have this this presence and this this motivating figure for people who – look up to you, admire you and think like, you know, I, I want to live my life the way Danny's lived her life. I want to, you know, I'm, I'm in this uh, relationship or I've, you know, gone through this element of suffering here. I'm ready to make that change. Somebody's going to watch this and this conversation is going to be somebody's survival guide. Like, what does it mean to be a strong woman and to kind of play that role, even though you do it so authentically, like you're just being you? You know, Personally, it means everything to me to be able to be in this spot because I wish when I was going through it that I had found someone that I could connect with, you know, and it's nice because, you know, social media does allow you to kind of connect with people on, you know, you don't have to know the person. You can watch their story through a series of photos and videos and you can be like, okay, well, she was once there. This is where I was like, and now she's here. It's like, you know, you get a little bit of hope. So the fact that I can be that for someone means everything because I needed that at the time. And I hadn't found someone who I like really resonated with or again, like there wasn't people in my life at the time that I could really lean on. So for me, just internally, again, it's, it's a heavy honor because I know the depth of the hurt that someone can go through in the situation that I was in. And so to be someone who people would categorize as like a powerful woman, it's just, again, it puts a smile on my face because for the very, a very, very long time, I was someone who was like, I would tell myself, you know, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm like worthless. Like everything that, you know, this person is saying about me is right. I don't deserve happiness, you know, all these things. And it was just toxic circle after toxic circle and 
it's so amazing to like see my progress from there. And mm-hmm. so like I'm I'm incredibly proud of it. So I'm proud to now be in the category of, you know, a powerful strong woman and I love that the younger generations can look up to it. And I think women need better role models. I've thought that for years. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when I was growing up, you know, the girls that I was looking on the, you know, the TV and the internet and everything is like, you know, we had like Britney Spears free Britney, but and like, <laughs> she's great. But you know, it was, it was also something where she got very sexualized mm-hmm. as a, you know, very, very young and you know, children watching that, like we're sponges. And so we see that and we're like, Oh, that's what I'm supposed to be, to be sexy or to be powerful, to be independent. Like I have to do this. And then you start looking at like all the reality TV shows. And it was, is a very unhealthy image for women or like when I was growing up for sure it was like you had to seek out the women that you should be looking up to whereas now like they're more accessible but Mm -hmm. I just remember you know the people that got the clout and the people that got the tv time are not the people that you want your children being like that's who I want to be and so it's nice to have that and it's nice to be put into like one of those categories at that point so I'll stop rambling but back to everything like it's amazing it's it's also (laughs) very cool that you maintain the optimism that like i can't see the light at the end of the tunnel now but i know it exists and just just the patience and the wherewithal and that translates really well to crossfit right some of these workouts are long they're grueling they're incredibly challenging and sometimes certain movements feel like they're going on and on and on Uh but then you inevitably realize that like just one rep at a time, one breath at a time. You just kind of chip away. You narrow that focus, just like you did with your heavy wall balls on your very first CrossFit workout. <laughs> chip what away. What did the, the, the rest of your CrossFit journey kind of look like leading up to the now, right? Like you hit that first CrossFit workout. You had the Kool-Aid. You were ready to roll in this sport, ready to take on this next chapter. What kind of happened next? It, again, it was just, it was kind of like the snowball effect. Like, you know, I started CrossFit, I bought the gear and then all of a sudden, you know, three months into CrossFit, they were talking about a local competition. I was like, yep, I'm doing that. That's and cool. then <laughs> I, I won that one. It was like Festivus games, like in tiny little Melbourne, Florida. And I was like, all right, okay. So what's the next one? And I just like kept finding it and finding it and finding it. And I just kept signing up for things and just getting better and asking for help. And it just grew, it grew and grew and grew. And then uh, a little after a year of doing uh, CrossFit, I got the opportunity to be on a team that was trying to go to regionals in the Atlantic region back when, you know, regionals was a thing. It was the last year for like me on team. Mm-hmm. So I did team with them and that's actually where I met Alex. And so I want to hear that story when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> I love that story. Oh my God. <laughs> he, he loves that mm-hmm. story. Uh, he's probably out there going like, oh no, here Here's it comes my again. high five for Alex. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, I did team and then like, you know, the next year I was like, I want, I want more and like, I want to, I really want to do this myself. And so the next year I went individual and then, you know, the next year regionals went away and we had sanctionals and it was like, again, it was like one of those things where I was like, you know, kid in the candy shop. I was like, look at all of these events that I can go to. (laughs) I'm like looking at all of them. I'm like, all right, well, there's like 50, I could do them all. <laughs> so, uh, I, we just, you know, I signed up for so many. I think, I, I think that year, like I for sure hold the record of, you know, the athlete who went to the most of them. Cause That's I awesome. just, I went to as many as I could. And then we I, went to the Mac on a team. That was my final time competing. First time competing with Britain. That's where we, we saw you for the first yes, time at the Mac. Saw you guys. DC. I remember <laughs> watching you guys in the corral. Cause you guys had just, you guys were about to go out and do that vested workout. Yep. And I was warming up for like our vested workout. And I remember talking to just like the general vicinity of people about like wearing the vest. And I remember the team, the teams that workout that you guys had to do in those vests. I just remember thanking the Lord it was rough. that I was like, Oh God, I'm so happy. I don't have to do that. Or even a version of it. Cause like ours was like totally different from, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, I remember it. It was synchro chest of our pull-ups with the vest guy, girl. And then it was burpee box step overs. We, we practiced thinking that the guys were going to have a 24 inch box and the girls would have a 20, but it was 20 for both mm-hmm. 75 pound dumbbells for the men 
and 50s for the ladies, uh-huh. those box step overs got expensive. <laughs> yes. And uh, you could tell. I remember watching the team just get absolutely demolished by those hard. dumbbells. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> In a vest, too, nonetheless. Yeah, Can't breathe. Good. Oh, man. But, yeah, so it, it's from the beginning of the CrossFit career to, like, where I am now, I'm always, like, I want to just you know, I just want to live the lie. I just want to do it. And that's why I was so bummed that, you know, sanctionals went away. I'm going to miss the the traveling and like going around to all these events. I know that a couple of them are sticking around, but I, I had a whole list. It was your dog park. It was. It was the opportunity for Danny to go out and play. Yes. <laughs> they took away my dog beach and I'm just over here like in a little yard going, thanks. <laughs> cool. So as you kind of started getting involved in, in the CrossFit, you know, competitive scene, you went team. What, what was the success factor kind of like on the team side of things that first time you went? Did you guys make the games, regionals, or what did that kind of look like? <laughs> we did not make the games that year. Um that year taught me a lot about what you need to have a successful team in CrossFit. You have to like each other. Yeah. You got to really like each other because there comes a point when you're going to be in the middle of a workout and it's going to hurt and you're going to see your teammate like suffering next to you. And you know, you have to have love for that person to be like, Hey, like we're in this together we can do this. Our team was like, Hey, what the fuck? Why are you going so (laughs) slow on these burpees? Like get down. And we're like, we're just yelling at each other. We're just so mad. And honestly, like we had a chance to like go to the games or like one of the workouts, you know, it just didn't go in our favor and we couldn't bring it together. Like through like the love of each other, we were already like, just like, Oh my God, so sick of each other. So no, but it taught me valuable <laughs> lessons about when you're choosing teammates for something like this, like you gotta, you gotta love each other. And I'm sure people all over the world who are on teams, they're sitting there and they're either like, yeah, or they're like, yeah. <laughs> so I know everyone that's been on a CrossFit team, like they understand what I mean when I say that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's so much transferability there too to business. Oh yeah. Right. Like, yeah. you know, you're going through, you know, a financial hardship with regards to a business you got to have those uncomfortable conversations in the midst of extreme stress and chaos. And so that's always been my, my favorite thing about the team side of things is just the transferability to life a little bit. So I'm happy you got to experience that. And, uh, just to give our, our listeners a cool little treat. How did you meet Mr. Alex Gordon? That, that, that one little team experience. Um, All right. So I, uh, I was living still in Melbourne, Florida, and I was commuting to Orlando about like an hour and 15 minute drive. So I was commuting to go and like be on their team because at the time you had to spend a certain amount of time like at the gym together. So I was traveling enough to like meet that quota. Um, And it had been like two weeks that I had been like traveling and I had met everybody on the team. Everyone was great. Uh, and they kept being like, yeah, Alex, like, I don't know, like he'll be around like soon, soon. They, and they, the first thing was like, he's the guy in tights. And I was like, okay. Uh, okay. I don't even know. And then the (laughs) second thing was they were like, and just, you know, he's Alex, just kind of like taking, you know, just, you know, and I like, they didn't give me any more information than that. They're just like, you know, and I was like, I don't, but okay. (laughs) So finally, like I show up to the gym and I see a guy in tights. I'm like, that's got to be him. That's got to be him. And I'm like, okay, like I'm preparing myself. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go over. It's the last teammate. We're all going to be great and it's going to be wonderful. So I'm going to go let him know that I'm the third girl that's going to be on the team. So I go over to him and I'm like, hi, are you Alex? And he goes, yeah. And I was like, okay, so like I'm Danny, like I'm the last girl that's going to be on the team. Like it's really awesome to meet you. So like, what are you doing? As in like, Hey, like, what are you doing? Like, let me jump in. Let's bond. And he just goes deadlifts and then just goes and does a set of deadlifts and then doesn't like do his set of deadlifts. And then like turns and like talks to me, just turns away and like just goes and like looks at his phone. I'm guessing like looking at his next like percentage set and just doesn't even like acknowledge my existence. And I was like, okay, (laughs) okay. I just like walk away. And I remember calling my mom and she was like, how's team going? I was like, yeah, it's good, but, like, I hate the last guy on our team. He is so rude. I just, like, was so mad. And now that I know Alex, like, it's one of those things where it's, like, he was just answering my question. He's yeah. just one of those. He was, like, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing deadlifts. But, yeah. like, if I had just been, like, 
hey, what are you doing? Let me join. He had been like, yeah, grab a bar. But it's just like one of those things where he's just so like direct and I'm yeah, so yeah. like, let's, let's floof. Let's add so much floof into the yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's anti-floof. <laughs> so there's that. So for the longest time, I actually hated him. And uh, I like avoided him and I just, I was playing, I started playing hard to get. And I was like, what? whatever, he doesn't have to work out with me. And I would see him come into the gym and ask everyone else if they wanted to do a workout. And I'm sitting there like waiting and he just never would. And I was like, okay, fine. One day everyone said no. Everyone was like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And so I'm sitting in the corner and I'm like waiting for it. (laughs) And he finally like comes over and he's like, all right, I have this workout. Do you want to do it with me? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And he goes, do you want to know what it is? I'm like, whatever it is, like we'll, we'll do it. And it was 50 down to 10 of push press and air squats. Super simple. And I beat him. And as soon as he gets done, he was like, you sure you did all your reps? Yes. And I was like, this, yes. I was like, this guy, what? <laughs> so, of course, like, you know, it continued on where I was like, I don't like this guy. But then, you know, we started like doing the team stuff together and we started like hanging out a little bit more in like a social setting. And then finally it came the time when Alex wanted to hang out outside of the gym. Mm-hmm. So he did. He asked, he was like, hey, do you like want to come out? And I told him, no, hey, sorry. Like I can't actually hang out tonight. I have to wash my hair tonight. And so I was like the biggest like fuck you I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, what? <laughs> so, but then after that, like he kept asking. I was like, oh, well, I mean, I... I put a dagger through the heart as hard as I could and he's still trying. So then I, I eventually gave him, I gave him a date and now we're here. There's something about persistence. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> That's very cool. And so sanctionals, mm-hmm. obviously they're not around anymore. They, yeah. they, they were, they were cool in the sense that there was a, fl- a, a plethora of opportunity, but also not so cool in the sense of like, it made the uh, the CrossFit season very not streamlined. There was a lot of moving parts going on. I mean, we saw the games that year, and there was so many participants. They had to do cuts, which, you know, was kind of cool, but also, like, not cool for people that, like, got to participate in one workout and flew all the way there and made all for these travel range. Yeah. Some people literally showed up to the CrossFit games to do a 400-meter run. Yeah. Ah, uh, you know how pissed I would be? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 that's pretty rough. And, yeah. you know, there was, there was a lot of cool things about it, but then there was that. Yeah. And so, you know, we went through the, the, this whole off season, this whole challenge of 2020 with the pandemic, with Black Lives Matter, with the shifts from Greg Glassman to Eric Rosa. As you're kind of going through this, mm-hmm. we're coming off a, a, a Titan Games win, which we can revisit here in a little bit. But what's kind of going through your brain where you're like, man, I made all these life changes. I've committed to this sport. I'm ready to do the CrossFit thing. And now I don't even know if it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was stressful. <laughs> so, you know, this is this is kind of like a loaded topic, uh, 2020 with like all the changes. So like, I'm going to try to answer everything that we just went over. Um, one, I guess we'll go through... You know, the changes from, like, sanctionals to not sanctionals, I miss sanctionals, personally. But I was already an established athlete. I had sponsors to help me get to these places, uh, help pay my way. And it's a bad structure for the breakout athletes who are trying to, you know, get their name across and, you know, get their name into people's mouths and all the people that do, like, the broadcasting, the morning chalk up, like, it's hard to get noticed when you can't make the events. So that's something where I sympathize me personally. Like I said, like I miss sanctionals. I love, I loved that. Um, the change I think was good for some aspects. It's great for the community to have like all these things with like the open and quarterfinals. Like it does get the community within like the gyms involved again. But I think that the community and the professional side of CrossFit is too meshed together to make it either one like truly, truly successful, Mm -hmm. especially on the side of like the professional athletes or the people who are trying to get to that point. You know, you have a you have a bad injury and your season is done now. Mm -hmm. And where a sanctional is like you could take six months to recover from something, go hit a sanctional 
or two or something like that and get a backfill spot. And mm-hmm. you can now go to the games and you can try to like enhance your career. Now it's just over. And you've seen a lot of different sports. Like, you know, you get an injury, you sit out a couple games and then you come back and you still get to have your career. And so that's the thing that I don't like about this kind of structure is we're mm-hmm. back to the point where like one mistake takes you out of the entire season. And while like I get it, you know, being like staying healthy and staying smart is part of the sport. I think it's a little, I think it's detrimental. I don't have all the answers on how to like make the professional side and the community side both perfect. I just know that this, I think creating this awareness it. around it is important because you bring up a very good point. It's like basketball, you tweak an ankle, you're out for a couple games and then you, and then you come back and once it's recovered, I think it makes it very hard for the professionalism. And you are somebody that, that dealt with a relatively serious injury. I think there's a lot of people out there that deal with serious injuries and either cover them up with PRP or stem cell or something like that just to get through said competition, but then suffer the consequences later. And that's not great for, you know, the, the longevity of the human. Yeah. And so, and it puts so much pressure on, and like, that's, you know, people will say, you know, ego is where CrossFit gets a bad rep, but I think it's because like, you know, the season puts so much pressure on athletes. Like you have to be healthy at this time or you're done. You're mm-hmm. irrelevant. Yeah. Like if you think about it, like a lot of, just because people weren't in the, you know, in the view because of 2020 and we didn't have a lot of like online stuff, a lot of athletes, like we haven't heard a lot about. And, you know, as someone who's really involved in the sport, like I keep up with people, but you know, someone who just wants to watch all the competitions, hasn't heard one person's name for a while. All of a sudden, you know, you start to become a little irrelevant until you get back on the actual scene. And Mm -hmm. it's like, it's a scary thought to think how quickly the turnover is, especially with like young athletes coming out. Um, and so for me with all of that, with 2020 happening the way it did, everyone was like, Oh, 2020 was terrible. But for me, actually 2020 was perfect timing. So I was supposed to compete in Wadapalooza in 2020, you know, into February. I, while at Titan Games, like in Atlanta, like filming and everything, I went and got an MRI for my shoulder because it just kept bugging me and I couldn't do anything. And I was like, I just have to know what's going on. So I just went to a, you know, a walk-in MRI place, got the results. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm like looking at this sheet that's telling me that like my labrum is essentially non-existent anymore. Yeah. It's like torn and like there is no amount of just like, <laughs> like resting it and not doing things that's just going to heal it. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, that's bad. So I went to, I was supposed to compete in Wadapalooza and I ended up going and just spectating. And very luckily I ran into Ron Ortiz Uh, And he told me about, you know, a doctor there in Miami that was doing stem cells and he had worked with Rich Froning and had like great results. And so I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, like this is, this seems like a sign. So I went and talked with him, set up the appointment and very early March, I got my stem cells. And then that next week, everything shut down from the pandemic and non-elective stuff was like non-existent. So I got in right at the right time and in a year where everyone had to take a break. People weren't competing. You know, everyone was kind of like off the scene. I got to recover. Whereas, you know, if 2020 had been a year, everyone was competing. I think mentally it would have destroyed me where Mm -hmm. I just watched everyone just compete all year, you know? And luckily I I had already made the games through the open that had happened. Um, cause the open was in, I don't even remember. Like there was like two opens, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the year with the two opens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, luckily for me, so I had already made the games, like being top twenty in the open. So I got to like I had already made it. So I got to heal, heal, heal all the way up until like the games. Um, so everyone, while they're saying you know twenty twenty was like the shittiest year, I'm over here like yeah, it was pretty shitty, but. Th- Thank God. Yeah, it was a blessing for you. <laughs> yeah, and so it's so it's really it's like it's one of those like taboo things to say because you know it, there was a lot of bad. There's mm-hmm. a lot of bad in 2020, but mm-hmm. for me personally, just in the life of Danny, <laughs> yeah. it was it was good mm-hmm. with that everything got put on pause. Yeah. What was the Titan Games kind of like? How were you able to perform at such a high level given the the challenges of the shoulder? And what was it like kind of being on set all the time, which had to be a little bit different. It was, it was definitely different. Um, so your first question with the shoulder, it was just like one of those things, like 
you know, adrenaline starts pumping through your body and you kind of like forget about some stuff. And luckily I didn't have to do anything because at the time, the only thing that was really too painful to push through was like a position where I was like in a ring dip Mm -hmm. and I didn't have to do any, you know, ring muscle ups for (laughs) Titan games. That would have been weird if they had thrown that one at me. (laughs) Uh, So everything that I was doing, like nothing really was too painful. Like it was like I, the first thing that I did was that that pu- that wall push, mm-hmm. like holding onto that wall. Like my shoulder was like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, like everything was fine. So like that wasn't like really a huge factor within the Titan Games. Um, but it was it was a great experience. It was an amazing experience. Like getting to compete alongside like some CrossFit athletes mm-hmm. in a non CrossFit setting was mm-hmm. also very cool. Obviously, meeting Dwayne Johnson also the very, Rock. Very, Do no, you rock. smell what the Rock <laughs> is cooking? <laughs> he um, <laughs> he, and he's another person where everything you get like on his social media is like who he is. Like mm-hmm. he's very, very kind and humble for the amount of success that that dude has. Like he just also just his work ethic. He travels so much, and he's like. Yeah. It's 2 a.m. I'm getting after it. Yeah. It's leg day. I'm not skipping leg day. I'm yeah. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. And I look at that and I'm like, all right, I can go get after I can, some squatting. Yeah, right I know. He's like <laughs> Iron Paradise. Like at 2:30 yeah. in the morning after like going to Taiwan or like you yeah. know just he just got his off his plane. His travel schedule is unreal. I would love to just like see a, a day in the life. A day in the, yeah, like a like, true day in the just life. Just like go 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 <laughs> and like how he fits in like nutrition and like does he have low moments where he's like all right. I got to get myself together to get through this workout. Of course or, or he does. Human, this. human of, again. Of, <laughs> of course, but like, I want to see it, mm-hmm. right? Like, I, I feel like I look at him. I look at Joe Rogan. I look at Kevin Hart. I look at CJ. I look at some of these guys and I'm just like, how do they keep do, do, keep going and going and going? And then when you think they get to turn off, they go home and they have kids and they have a family and yeah. they have other external responsibilities yeah. There's no off switch. Mm-hmm. There's just, you know, varying, you know, times throughout the day of like peaks and valleys of like highs and lows. But it's so impressive to watch some of these high performers. You're absolutely one of them. And so going through this injury, you got to dabble with the Titan games a little mm-hmm. bit. What was the recovery like with regards to your shoulder? So you got the MRI. You're, you're kind of sitting with this going through recovery. You know you have the 2020 games coming up. What was that whole recovery kind of like post, post, you know, operation? Stressful. It was really stressful. Um, so got the stem cells on March 10th and, you know, August was the, was the games. And so I got the stem cells and the PT that I was working with in Orlando, you know, I told him like my plan, yes, is to recover, but my main plan is I'm competing at the game. So we have to figure out some kind of recovery strategy that gets us there. And so, you know, me in my head where I'm like, okay, like I have this magic juice (laughs) in my shoulder Mm -hmm. that's going to heal me, you know, two weeks off and like, I'll be back at it. And you know, you get four months in and push ups are still so incredibly painful Mm -hmm. And I can't do any of that. And I've done the bike erg and pistols and walking lunges for four months. And I'm ready to just end it all. I'm like, I can't, I cannot, do not ask me to get on the bike erg again. I cannot do it. And like, it was just emotionally overwhelming because someone who goes in thinking like two weeks and then all of a sudden like we're getting closer and closer and closer to the games. And like, I haven't done any sort of gymnastics I can't even run because the impact of like going down like this, like while running was painful. And so I'm sitting here looking at all of these things that I cannot do. And so the mindset thing, again, back to the mindset, there was, it was really, it was like a lot of lows. Um, and I was just like so frustrated and right around like two months from the games, I started being able to like really get in like some kind of like volume and some weightlifting And I started feeling good and I was like, okay, like I'm not having like pain. Like things are, things are progressing well. And then like two and a half weeks out from the CrossFit games, I'm doing a workout and I'm doing double unders and somehow being the incredible athletic specimen that I am, I step on my own foot while doing double unders and my 
ankle goes all the way to the ground. And so now (laughs) after I finally got my shoulder together, I have a very serious ankle injury to where I cannot run or do any like I'm doing seated skier and I'm like oh, man. oh my god I'm just to be so frustrated oh yeah I was I was so mad and so it was just one of those things where I was still in a lot of pain with my and I still have ankle issues but then it was really frustrating because I you know I go into the games and it's you have to be alone I had to do these workouts alone with just like you know some friends and uh like the coaches and the owners of my gym and then the crossfit sent a judge so it's like me and like six people just like silently you know cheers here and there watching me do these workouts it's not fun Mm -hmm. like it's just not um i know that some people kind of were able to put on some kind of like thing but doing these workouts by yourself it's just not fun it's just so not fun and i've already like gone through like so much like stress and just downs like that year like this was not this was not the event that was gonna like ooh, like yeah. yay we're back in it like i'm like oh, i'm just in the same gym that i always am doing things alone now with two injuries rather than just one so i'm sitting here i'm like yeah this is this is great and i just i tried to have a positive mindset but it was really hard that year mm-hmm. and i let myself down because of my negative mindset like i went into every single workout kind of like yeah well like Hopefully this isn't too painful. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we got to the day where, you know, we had like the running with the overhead squats and the burpees and my ankle was just like, cause I, I just, I hadn't been running. So obviously like my running, my conditioning for me, like it goes fast. I can take months off and my strength stays, but my conditioning, I take two days off and I can't breathe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not doing that, like going into that event, like that was detrimental. And then after the run the next day, having to do drag rope double unders and having to jump higher than usual, my ankle was not having that. And so I was just like, so frustrated with the CrossFit games. I was like, I, yep, I'm just going to take some time off. I'm just like, I'm done. (laughs) I was so upset. And it took me a really long time. It took me until I came here and visited for a week to get back into like, okay, wait. Yeah, no, I, I do really love this sport. Mm -hmm. I love what I do. Why are you just throwing yourself this huge pity party? Like what the fuck? Like wake, wake up. Your life is going to go by so fast and you're going to, this year is over and gone and you are wasting time by like thinking about what happened like last year, like get over it. It's Mm -hmm. time. (laughs) Let it go. And then I, you know, I came here and I got to hang around you incredible people and you guys gave me that back and that love and how fun it can be to be in the, in the gym and push yourself every single day. And so you guys always talk to me about how it's been awesome for me to come here, but you guys have no idea the impact that all of you gave me. So I think the feeling is absolutely mutual. And I think I I was listening on the uh, make pods great again, where where you were on, I think like a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. And um, you you hit the nail on the head where like CrossFit programming is like, you're either trying to get stronger. You're either trying to enhance your conditioning. Maybe you're working on some strength endurance. Maybe it's, you know, a touch of all of it. But at the end of the day, I mean, we saw Matt Frazier and Tia training together, which rose some eyebrows. Back in the day, we used to see Rich Froning and Dan Bailey train together. And, you know, my background coming from Valley CrossFit, training with Chris Clever and Becca Voigt and Lindsay Valenzuela and the OG Valley girls back in the day. I think the magic is in, you know, who you train with, right? Because there's going to be days where I don't want to do it. And you do. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to follow her lead. And then vice versa. And then you look at the incredible athletes that we have out here, you know, from, from, from Brittany to Jen to Jorge to Eric to, you know, when Lauren was here and all these amazing athletes that come in and out of the gym, you know, daily, weekly. We had Reagan here last week. You know, we've had Kristen Holtick, Christy, Christy Ermo, like amazing athletes that come in and out of here. And it's, it's inevitable that all tides are going to rise because, you know, all of us can't sync our energy systems all the time in the yeah. sense of like, you know, you may have, you know, a business responsibility or something going on over here, or a body worker, you know, maybe you got a little bit sick or whatever, but it's like inevitably when we all have this like home base being the gym, we all arrive, we're going to push, we're going to pull, we're going to do everything we can to try to get to that elevated state. And it's just that constant and never-ending improvement, really. 
And I think, you know, you brought that for us as well, where it was like, I felt like we, we had all the tools, but like we needed the fertilizer. We didn't have fertilizer. We were just like, uh, we're, we're back in the gym again, but it's not like it was. I love that. I'm fertilizer. Fertilizer. <laughs> fertilizer. We're, that, that's I it. need a shirt. That's your new nickname. <laughs> yes. Hey, fertilizer's at the gym now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like in order for all of us to kind of sprout, right, and mm-hmm. grow, it was like we, we, we needed that, that, that combo. You need the magic sauce. You yeah. just need like that magic combination of everything. Yeah. And, you know, you, you obviously were seeking that. Alex was shifting, you know, for a change. The humidity of Florida is rough. Oh. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're pretty fortunate to have yeah. ideal weather here where, yeah, we experience a little bit of June gloom, May gray here and there. But for the most part, we are so spoiled here in San oh, Diego. Yeah. Like, I'm never leaving now. Yeah, like, for real. You guys are stuck with me. <laughs> for real. And, and, and with that being said, you have this amazing thing, girls who eat. Yeah. And you came to a city where there's a lot of good food spots a in San Diego. Good food. And, you know, will you kind of chat about that a little bit? Like you can start with just like your relationship with food. How is that? And, you know, how has it kind of evolved over the years? Um, so first off, like the whole like the girls who eat thing started off as just like a funny like hashtag that mm-hmm. I was, you know, that I was using with some friends. Um, and it became so much more to me because I think a lot of times like women, they don't know how to fuel their bodies and they don't know how to eat and they even shy away from eating and enjoying food because they're worried about what it's going to do to their bodies. And so this whole thing about like girls who eat, like just, you know, eat it, like have, have the experience of food because food brings so much happiness. Mm -hmm. I mean, the endorphins alone, (laughs) but having a healthy relationship with food. Like I want to be, you know, I want to like lead this like movement of girls who eat, but like know how to eat, how to fuel their bodies, know when to indulge. Because I do think this, you know, we're going to get into some taboo stuff right here. (laughs) Which is good. Which is good. um, I think it's good for people to hear that. I think that the body positivity movement that is going on right now is absolutely incredible. I think we have looked at women who weigh 90 pounds who try to weigh 90 pounds not like you know the genetic people who like they can't put on weight Mm -hmm. there are those kind of people but the ones who really 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 almost starve themselves to be to look a certain way I think for a very very long time the media idolized those girls and now that we're getting into body positivity I think it is absolutely wonderful and it is necessary for the society Mm -hmm. I do however think that there needs to be some structure to it. I yeah. think the body positivity thing, you know, it is so easy to go one step too far because I do think you should love your body. I 100% think that. And I think everyone out there is beautiful. But I think when we're encouraging body positivity in a way that says, you know, like it's okay to be unhealthy, I think we get to like one of those touchy subjects. You can love your body. I think everyone is beautiful, but I do think that uh, at the same time, we need to make sure that we are also promoting healthy body. It shouldn't be this this polarizing image of like, like you mentioned, like I'm starving myself over here to fit this image to try to look like the person on the magazine cover in the grocery line versus, Hey, I'm over here. I eat whatever I want, whenever I want. And my cholesterol is inc- incredibly high. And my biomarkers aren't good. That's not good either. Yeah. You know, and like, obviously there's genetic factors, right? Of so course. if you are trying your best to eat responsibly, eat real food. I just spoke with um, E.C. Sinkowski from Optimize Me Nutrition. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like all these different nutritional organizations, they push eat real food. Yeah. And if you eat real food, you're enhancing your gut microbiome. You're trying your best to hit your macros if you're a macro counter or trying your best to eat the rainbow, right? Different colors for, you know, optimizing flora and whatnot and get, getting different phytonutrients. Um, I, I think there's, there's definitely something to be said there about like truly loving yourself, but it's really somewhere in the middle of those polarizing sides. Be- and, and, and that's what I love about kind of what you're doing where it's like, you eat structured, you eat responsibility, responsibly to fuel your body for the tasks that you're doing each and every single day. And then at the conclusion of that, you really do do an amazing job of like, hey, you're, you, you have to balance it out with like, hey, I need a cheat meal every now and then. I do want to have donuts at the end of the open or at the end of quarterfinals because 
that is, that is a great way for me to experience joy. And not everybody experiences joy that same way. But what I love is the fact that you're bringing this awareness to the forefront of, the, of conversation. And I think it needs to be a conversation because it's like you shouldn't be on either side. It needs to be somewhere in the middle where it's, where, where it's ideal for you. Yeah. And I think it's just, like you said, it's like the balance thing and everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to be on a diet still, you know, in moderation, like, you know, enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to be on your deathbed looking back and going like, oh man, like I'm so happy. (laughs) I ate lettuce for eight years. For real. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Like you're going to, you're going to like, you're going to be there being like, I should have eaten the bacon. Mm -hmm. I should have just had the bacon that day. Mm -hmm. And you know, in all things in life, I should have done this. I should have done this. Like you just don't want to like leave with regrets. And while I have goals as an athlete and I want to go and win the CrossFit games, I also am not going to sacrifice the happiness of my life for this. And while it, everything that I do for CrossFit and for this profession makes me happy. And I enjoy, you know, the, the days where I do the structured meals and I, you know, I feel great in the gym and there's a time and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. And you can't just like cut things, you know, that do serve as happiness in your life out of your life. Like, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. Like you can moderate everything. I also really love the social component, right? Like just, just the conversation, the laughter, the, like when we went and got burgers and milkshakes. Oh, so good. So good. (laughs) good. 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 (laughs) And the spontaneity, right? Like you, we go there with like, you know, if somebody wants to eat a certain way and fit within their macros, cool. There's no judgment. Yeah. If somebody wants to have, you know, a milkshake, cool. No judgment. And I think just, just making that a safe space, right? Where yeah. it's like, you know, you, we're all at different points within our journey. And just accepting that and having that conversation and making it okay is really, really cool. When I've kind of coached people a little bit nutrition, I always like let them know like, hey, shop the perimeter of the grocery store. Uh, if it comes out of a bag or a box, it's probably not the best thing in the world. Um, if you can't pronounce the ingredients, it's probably a little bit of a red flag. Um, if it has an unlimited expiration date, it's probably a little bit of a red flag. Yeah. And then obviously trying to push, you know, eating real food and whatnot. What advice or where do you kind of start with some of your nutrition clients? Like what, what do you kind of push with regards to uh, education on the nutrition side of things? Mine comes from what was successful for me and it's the moderation thing. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people when they start like when I work with my nutrition clients, a lot of people are really excited to get started and they're like, okay, like I'm going to do this and I'm going to have abs and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to look great and blah, blah, blah. And then they do really, really wonderful for three, four months. And then all of a sudden, like they hit that point where they've done well for so long where they're like, okay, like it's time. Like I can't do it anymore. I'm going to have a cheat meal. And because they waited so long, it's like, they fall off. Mm -hmm. And so my biggest thing is I don't ever tell them to sacrifice like the happiness. Like there's a time and a place to be strict and say no to things. But when I work with my nutrition clients through the holidays, I'm like, okay, the day before and Thanksgiving and the day after, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want you to take out your phone and get on my fitness pal. I don't want you looking up macros, like enjoy these three days and then we'll get back on it. And guess what? We'll have a month. And then Christmas Eve, Christmas, and the day after Christmas, I don't want to hear from you again. And we're going to like go wild, like enjoy your day. It's such a healthy relationship with food, which I love. And you, you have to, you have to have it. Mm -hmm. And there are those people who are, you know, almost like a little neurotic with it. And they find comfort with the structure of being able to like know exactly what they're eating. And they don't want to like go off on those like rampages. And that's great. Me personally, I'm not one of them, so I can't relate to that. I am someone who every single day, if I could, would go and have tacos and milkshakes until I was physically ill. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm someone who has to be like, okay, like today's the day that we are, you know, structured. Like this, you know, leading up to like the semifinals and the games, like it's more structured, obviously. But you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, all right, when we get back from Vegas, I'm going to go here and here (laughs) and probably here. (laughs) And so I'm already thinking about those kind of things. So I know a lot of like more people resonate with that kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones who they have to kind of like sprinkle it in here and here and there Mm -hmm. and just like set like, like, again, the little goals that we were talking about at the beginning of all of this. If you can make it, you know, 14 days, 
have a day. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go another yeah. 14 days and have a day. Like, it's just like one of those things where, and as long as you have the conversation where like, Hey, if you want to have a cheat meal every two weeks or a whole entire cheat day, realize your progress might be slower than somebody who's neurotic for six months, mm-hmm. but you might be a little happier and it might be more sustainable and the longevity of the, like, you know, the lifestyle change. Cause I don't like calling things diets. When I work with clients, I want them to have a lifestyle change. I want them to work with me for a couple months and be able to just to go and do it for the rest of their lives and Mm -hmm. moderate themselves and come back to me if they just want new macro numbers, you know, that kind of situation. That's great. So that's my biggest thing is like, I will help you with your nutrition, but like really I want to talk to you about how we can make a lifestyle change to where you can be happy Mm -hmm. and not just be like someone who has to like sit with a container of food while everyone has Christmas dinner. Like that's not what I want for, you know, that's not what I want for myself. So I can't, I would never, you know, try to like do that for one of my clients. I like that. Upgrading people's personal operating systems and their relationships with food. There you go. Yeah. I need, again, I need a shirt. Yeah. (laughs) And clearly you're doing it well. You're coming off, you know, a really high finish with regards to, to quarterfinals. Yeah. And we are one week out from the one semifinals. Week. I know. We're Actually less now. Less than a week. Less. And we're heading to Vegas. Vegas. For the West Coast Classic. What was quarterfinals kind of like for you? Quarterfinals was, it was great. I mean, we had athletes that came to the gym, so it was like really competitive. And it was, it was nice because it kind of gave like the um, competing with other athletes and like, kind of like that, you know, the competitive drive. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was, you know, for all the opens, everything that I did at my old gym back in Orlando, I had people that did the workouts with me and people that pushed me in different like aspects, but every one of those people had like different goals. Like, you know, like I had one of the owners of the gym who was like a dad and a husband and did something else on top of like running that. So like when he was in the gym, like he was a great training partner, but he had other aspirations and goals in his life. Mm -hmm. And then I had, you know, some of the girls that would come in and, you know, some of them are in PT school and some of them are doing this with their jobs. And like everyone was there to have fun, but they had like their outside goals. Like I was the only person whose goal it was to win the CrossFit games. And so it's like one of those, it's just different now that I'm here and everyone's goal is like, how are we going to go win the CrossFit games? How are we going to train harder? How are we going to optimize? And it brought that sense of like camaraderie, but the competition oh, yeah. and like I thrive on competition. That's cool. Um, so quarterfinals was great. The open was great. And I was someone who on when that first workout for the open got released with the wall walks. Like I was on my Instagram story. Like, what is this? Like, this is stupid. <laughs> and then I did the workout and I was like, Oh, okay. That was like fun. <laughs> it's like, damn Shoulder it. pump, tricep I pump it. city. <laughs> it was just a different stimulus. And honestly, like I loved it and I had to eat my own words and I was like, all right, Dave, like, okay. <laughs> yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Counting double unders as a judge wasn't cool, but the actual workout was cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. I got done with that workout and like, I don't like my video is out there somewhere, but I did, I got done with my workout and like I paused and I look right at CJ and I'm like, did I do all my double unders? And I'm, cause like when I'm doing it, I think it, it ended with like a set of 200 or something or whatever it was, but I count by fifties and I got done and I was like, okay, 49 and 50. And then I was like, did I have another set of 50? <laughs> oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. So I'm like looking at CJ. I'm like, did I do them all? And he goes, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? And so then I'm yelling at Alex. I'm like, Alex, I do all my double unders. He goes, what do you mean? Ask CJ. And I'm like, I did ask CJ. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. And so like I'm panicking and it's all on video. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And so I'm just like holding my rope and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do another 50 just in case. And CJ goes, no, like, just like, let's review the video. I'm like, no, I'm going to do it. And so it was just like a whole hassle. So like, oh, that was great. So that was quarterfinals. So, so, that was so, open. so what you're saying is your height, your heart rate spikes more from the lack of double unders than from the 50 double unders. hundred percent. hundred percent. Oh my gosh. The stress. And then I'm sitting there on the floor, like counting. I'm like, one, two, three, four. <laughs> and I just am like, please, dear God. <laughs> Dave Newman from RX Smart Gear has the best counting strategy. He always counts the up. Up. And yeah. I'm, I'm just like, dude, you have like a superpower in your ability yeah. to count. Cause I'm, I mean, they teach you in, in, in CrossFit level one, level two to like count the, the pat, mm-hmm. but it's like the pat gets confused when there's all these athletes next all to each athletes. other, the cheering them. The, like I start counting the rhythm of the song. I'm like, yeah. what am I doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. But he taught me that same thing. And so I started doing that. And now everyone's just, it's like, you're casting a Harry Potter spell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's, that's super cool. Yeah. 
So in quarterfinals, you had a thing. I think it was a GHD pistol workout. Yeah. And you mentioned you couldn't walk right <laughs> for like a week, and you couldn't sit down on the toilet. What was that like? I was so sore from that <laughs> workout. I was, and it was like the combination. So like we had four days to do all of the workouts and. The way that when Reagan Huckabee was here, when we did it, we just did all of them in two days. Like mm-hmm. we wanted to just like get it done and have our weekend Yeah, because we wanted to go and have our cheat meals. <laughs> 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 we were like, you know, if we just get it done, like, you know, burgers and like donuts. And so, <laughs> uh, so that's what we did. We were like two days and we're just going to be done with it. So packing it all in, it was, it was, it was intense. I remember like getting done with that workout and then having to come in and do wall balls. And I was like, guys, I don't know if I'm, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make it. Um, and I was, I was sort of the combination, you know, with the GHG cause your hip flexors get mm-hmm. so like incredibly lit and then also your abs. Yep. So getting off the GHG and going to the rope climbs, like, you know, pulling your body in. Like I remember doing the first rope climb thinking like, I'm going to feel great cause I haven't used my arms. Mm-hmm. And I got there and I was like, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I had to take like three pulls. I never take three pulls on like rope climbs. I just want to take a moment to appreciate the sound effects. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that's actually what Those I of you that like. did the workouts as well, you know what that sound is. <laughs> yeah. And then like you're like, okay, well like, shit. <laughs> I have so many of these right now because it started like it was six. And like, you know, you think six rope climbs, but then all of a sudden you're like six, <laughs> my legs, I can't move my legs. Like they're not coming. Like I can't like, I'm just like, Oh my God. <laughs> and then you're done with those and you got to go to the pistols and like, you have to hold your leg out and you're like, Whoa. <laughs> like, so that workout. And then I remember just, I remember getting done with that one and was like, Oh, thank God that one's over. And then about an hour after I was done, I was, you know, just trying to like walk into my car, kind of like, okay. (laughs) I went and sat in an ice bath. I did everything that I could. And Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, like this should be great. I'll, you know, I'll Normatec and I'll Hypervolt and I'll sit in the ice bath and I'll do contrast and everything will be great. And I was coming back in for that wall ball workout and was like, everything is not okay. (laughs) (laughs) And I knew that second day soreness was going to hit me even harder. So I was like, well, we just, we're going to gonna go for it <laughs> we're all just sitting there like mm-hmm. <laughs> so there yeah that was what uh that what, was that what mindset tricks do you kind of play when you know you, you you don't have all the tools in your toolbox right I, I think people forget that sometimes when they mm-hmm. watch the crossfit games they're like oh yeah i tested that workout in my gym and my time was way faster than danny's so technically i should be at the gym it's like no no, no you didn't do all these workouts before that and so you know, what did that kind of feel like when you get to this, you know, high volume wall ball and rowing workout, your midline's toast, your legs are toast. Yeah. Maybe you can yank with your arms a little bit extra <laughs> and throw a little bit harder with the arms on yeah. the wall ball. But like, that's not how you practice it all year round. So like what, what was going through your brain on that last one? Just like get to the finish line so I can have burgers and donuts with my buddy Reagan. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes, but it's more of, so you get to a certain point where you know you'll make it through the, like for this, you know, this setup of this season, pretty confident that I was going to make it through the open and the quarterfinals. So for me, it became, what am I going to learn from this workout? And going into that final workout, like, yeah, you feel like that at the games after day two. Mm-hmm. And you're like, whoa, like I'm, I'm feeling it. And I have three more days of competition. Mm-hmm. So you go into it and you're like, okay, well, how, even though my body is feeling this way, how can I like push through this? Like, how can I warm my body up? Or how can I like push through just like my legs being on fire from wall ball number one instead of, you know, waiting until wall ball hundred. And so you just start like playing those little games is like, you know, what are you learning from this? Mm -hmm. Like, how is this making you better? Um, I love that these, these little, um, questions that you have with yourself have served you through all the points of adversity within your life and just keep you progressing forward. And, you know, you've been such a great mentor in our space as well. You know, and I I can speak, you know, for, for Brittany a little bit here, she's been stoked to have you in the gym constantly questioning and, you know, applying pressure when needed and then backing off when needed and, you know, just trying to follow by your example. And so she's, she's been someone that's been, you know, stoked to have you here. But on that topic as well, we were gently chatting about some of these teens and this amazing performance that they're putting on. They're obviously headed to the CrossFit Games, Mallory O'Brien and Emma Carey. What are your thoughts on, you know, these young guns getting after it? 
Fuck yeah. I love it. I am so here. I'm so here for it because it's, you know, it's, it's like one of those things where everyone's saying like, oh, like, you know, you, you hit a peak around like this age and like these young bucks are coming in and being like, yeah, well, I'm 17. I, you know, I weigh this much. I do this much and I'm beating your ass ass yeah. <laughs> you're like I mean, yes ha- ha- you are <laughs> yeah i mean Haley adams started the trend yeah and now you've got you know athletes younger than her getting after it and it's just amazing to see yeah. what what these humans are capable of mm-hmm. <laughs> it is just like the progression of the sport like you look at workouts that people did you know in 2013 2014 and we retest and demolishing old times like women are demolishing men's old times like everything is just evolving and progressing not to mention and just... the snatch numbers you think like oh yeah she's probably great at gymnastics and cardio because of xyz background but then they're putting up big numbers in the only lifts too yeah and you're like what <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah you're literally like what <laughs> yeah uh like they're weighing like a like a buck 40 like soaking wet and they're like snatching like relatively close to you yeah. and you're like oh okay Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very cool to watch. And, you know, I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm very excited to watch the continual development of our competition yeah. season. And you've now tested all, all the workouts that have been released for West Coast Classic. Almost all of them? All of them? Ye- Just about yes, all of them. Yes, yes, yeah, you yes, played yes, with yes, most yes. Of them. <laughs> we have that cool, like, Torx LED that we Love got to it. see, which is like a cool new, new toy that we get to play with this yes. next year. Um, what are your thoughts kind of moving into this next phase? It's a stacked field. You've got, you know, Lauren Fisher coming. You've got Carrie Pierce. You've got Bethany Shadburn. You've got some really awesome athletes. And someone like you, like you mentioned, thrives in competition. Everybody's going out there buddy-buddy in the warm-up area. But then it's going to be awesome to watch you guys out there on the competition floor. Just, at, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Ooh. <laughs> and it's like, I, I, I'm really excited to see you guys get after it. What's kind of going through your head leading up to, uh, you know, of all places, Vegas. That's Vegas. like a really exciting place yeah. for us to, 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 to watch you throw down. I'm so fucking stoked. I'm just, I just want to compete again. Like that's, like I said, I thrive off the competition. And it's been so long since we've done like an in-person event. Mm-hmm. I obviously care about how the weekend turns out Mm -hmm. but some part of me doesn't even care because I just like I just want to go out and I just want to compete again like I love it Mm -hmm. and I'm always going to be someone who like I want to compete against good athletes like I want it to be a battle because nothing feels better than doing a workout and getting to the finish line and you're all like sprinting across and you're looking around you're like who got their their chip timer across the thing first and you know the athletes love it too like it's more fun Mm -hmm. to have like competition and to like really thrive off of it and like be laying on the floor just like dying and it's great because you as you mentioned like we are like you know buddy buddy in the warm-up area and then we're like we're still joking as we kind of like come out onto the thing and then as soon as like the thing goes like athletes stand by you're like all right enemies (laughs) (laughs) don't here we go and then you know you cross the finish line it's like right back to it Mm -hmm. and that's what I love about the sport is it's like it's so easy to be like okay like friend competitor friend and then like it's just it's over and we're like okay yeah that was like that was hard and then Mm -hmm. you start just like joking you're like okay like that was hard, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and there's this like, we- not weird, but like this nonverbal bond yeah. that goes on about the workout. And you're like, oh man, I felt this on this part of the workout. And, yeah. you know, she felt that on that part of the workout. Just like having that uh, revisit down memory lane is always mm-hmm. super fun. Not to mention, for those of you that haven't checked the weather report, it's supposed to be like 115 degrees out there. Uh. And so <laughs> I, I, I think that throws another element, right? We watched mm-hmm. Granite Games, you know, a, a week or so ago, and the heat out there played a big factor. I mean, at the finish line, people are shoving their heads inside of coolers. Everybody's like wearing gloves because the bars are all hot and the rubber was hot on the, on, on the field. Yep. So after that ruck run, you better have a bucket of ice for me. Yeah. <laughs> Nice bucket. I'm coming of, right n- to you. <laughs> nice bucket of ice and just like a slew yes. of electrolytes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's going to be really cool just because uh, personally, like myself, Holden, Hunter, Tino, Alex, CJ, like this is for some of us our first time kind of being on this coaching side of things. Yeah. And so we're, we're very excited to kind of be there to support, provide strategy where we can. If they allow us to run on the ruck run, we're bringing the bird scooters and we're spritzing you guys as you guys are running to keep like the, the temp- misting fans. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes. I think it's. I also be- need some theme music. Oh, absolutely. Missing fans and like theme music. Absolutely. Yeah. So, with that being said, if you you know if you could have a theme song, I, I know oh, I know you've been asked this before, but like let, let let's revisit the Titan Games. Did they have a theme song for you when you walked out there? Like if you were going out to bat. At Petco they, Park here for the Padres. They had like the Titan Games like theme music, oh, which okay. whatever that was with the whoosh of the flames. And yeah, then the, yeah, yeah. I actually can't even do. I don't. I don't remember what the, <laughs> I was. I was gonna do it, and then I was like, I don't that'll know be what the I'm thumbnail doing. that we come up with for, for this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't. I don't. Oh. My, I feel like every single day I like wake up and it's like a different mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I wake up and I'm like, all right, like. You know what? J. Cole's gonna get me through today. Or yeah, like, yeah. you know what? James Brown is gonna get me yeah, through today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you know, like, you don't just, discriminate. No, I don't. So like, every single day is like a different, a different, uh, a different thing. That's cool. You know, Beyonce helps me a lot. A lot. <laughs> but I feel like you know, like Tomb Raider, like Laura Croft, whatever, like music she was going into, yeah, like she's bad, badass. she's badass. <laughs> I don't even know if she had a theme song, but whatever she had. That's very <laughs> cool. So to conclude things a little bit, you and Alex, you know, run Delhi Athletics. So you have like the, the, the business side of things as well, mm-hmm. right? Like, and a, and a lot of that is the, like you taking lifestyle design to help funnel it for people to, you know, have this amazing life that's not overly complicated. You know, what is that kind of like? I, I think sometimes within this fitness and health space, people are like, oh yeah, they don't have real jobs. They train all day. First of all, training all day is freaking hard. I don't care what sport you're in. Training all day is freaking hard. And if you guys out there want to quit your jobs and train all that, I'd love to see you try because it's freaking brutal. Those are my favorite DMs. Yeah. It's like the <laughs> – It's hard, man. I mean, I look – me I, I don't have a job. <laughs> yeah. I look back at like CrossFit, basketball, and it's like – it's a lot of work to stay in tip-top shape. Not to mention when you are experiencing subtle downtime, you feel guilty. You're like, is somebody else outworking me? Do I need to do better with my recovery? Do I need to get in the gym? Do I need to practice X, Y, and Z thing that got me at my last competition? Like the, the wheels are constantly going. Yeah. And so, you know, how do you find time to squeak in, you know, some of this, this, this business stuff that you, get, that you guys run while simultaneously balancing, you know, just having personal time for you plus, you know, obviously your training and your recovery. You know, it's, it is difficult and you find yourself like multitasking a lot. Like, you know, you wake up in the morning and I have like my stuff that I need to do to like fuel my body for my workouts. And so while I'm doing that, like, you know, I'm answering some emails, just like casually like doing some like that stuff in the morning. And then, you know, sometimes on the way to the gym, I, you know, jump on some calls with some clients or sponsors or whatever that I need to do. And then it's time to like work out. And so then, you know, it's time to go home and like have, you know, fuel my body again for the next training session. And like, while I'm doing that again, I'm, you know, I'm writing programs and I'm answering emails and I'm doing things like that. So it's just like finding the time. And then also just realizing that sometimes I do just need to take a step back. And so, I use my Thursdays and my Sundays like really to my like advantage. And so like today, like this is, this is wonderful. Like this is fun for me, but Sundays, like I always like tell my clients, I'm like, unless it's somehow a dire emergency, (laughs) please realize that like Sundays are, you know, really kind of like my day to not do anything. Mm -hmm. And so, and I've never had a problem. Like everyone understands that Sunday is kind of like a, like a no touch day. Mm -hmm. And then you know, Thursdays again, like I always, I set some time just in the morning before I usually go and swim or something to like do some work. Uh, so I just like find the balance there. But again, like it's, it's easy because, you know, I work, but I don't see it as where I love what I do. I Mm -hmm. really do. I wake up every single morning stoked as hell to go to the gym and talk to people and talk to women about like their bodies and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I love what I do, but again, it gets hard sometimes when, you know, you're exhausted and then you have to do like a nutrition consult. And so I, I found that the best thing is just being honest and just being like, I want to have this consult with you today, but I am so tired. You're not going to get, you're not going to get a good one. Like, please understand that it will be more beneficial for you and for myself if we just do this tomorrow. And you know, honestly, usually get, people are like, yeah, thanks for, thanks for not just like giving me like a half ass like thing. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So it's just finding that balance and just being honest with yourself and with your clients and just going through all that. And that's the thing with like Dell Athletics is like, I, 
I am authentic. And so like I'm authentic with my clients as well. Like just like my Instagram page, like I all let people know when I'm just like, guys, I am tired. Like, mm-hmm. please realize that I am human. I know that a lot of you do put me up on a pedestal, which I appreciate, but I, I'll be the first one to knock myself down and be like, no, I'm human. And like, I need a nappy nap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, please just yeah. let me, let me breathe. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's been, it's great, but the balance has been pretty easy to find, to be honest with you. When I think of you, I think of the question, why can't we have both? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, why can't we have the structure and the play? Why can't we have the business and the training? Why can't we have the like, I'm going to get after it, but I'm also, I just want to curl up with, with my dog right now. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think you do such a great job of not necessarily creating balance. I don't really like looking at it like that because then it means that one weighs more than the other. But what I see is you do this great job of creating harmony, right? You've integrated business into your lifestyle. You've integrated your lifestyle into business. You've integrated your relationship into your life. Your life integrates with your relationship. And you just, the harmony that you create where everything's gently connected is so unique to me, but it's also, that is life, right? When you experienced your ankle injury, you realized it was affecting your brain. Those are on two different parts of your body, but this is all connected. It's a kinetic chain. And there, there is a famous quote out there. I think it's a John Muir one, but it's something around the lines of like, when we find that, like one, when we find one thing and we think it's isolated, it's actually hitched to everything in the universe. And you embody that. And I, I appreciate you holding this space and spending time with me on this Sunday before you depart to the West Coast Classic. Thank you. To kick some ass and yes. having some fun and most importantly, building some memories, getting out there, giving your absolute best effort with those that you love and then sharing it with the world with the utmost authenticity. Thank you. Any uh, last minute thoughts that you'd like to share or like if you had like this billboard for people and you could put something up there, what would you like that potentially to say? Oh, that's loaded. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at you, though, and it's like, it could be be authentic. It could be, you know, girls who eat. DM me to understand the context, right? <laughs> like, I think <laughs> I, I, I think it's, it's a cool thing, though, right? Like, because we could say anything, and anything could be taken out of context. But in reality, what's the goal? Connection, just like we've experienced today. So we could explain that context and build that relationship. I think my biggest thing is, you know, what my dad taught me best is just make, make sure you're having fun in your I life. Love that. And, you know, he taught me how to have fun. My dad really taught me how to have fun, like, you know, from outdoor stuff to like taking me to the rock climbing gyms to letting me experience like different food through the different cultures and, you know, reading different you know, literature from, you know, like some fiction to historical to, you know, poetry to plays and, you know, just the well diverse upbringing that I had. He taught me how to have fun and how to like experience new things. So like, that's my biggest thing is like, no matter what you're doing in your life, please ask yourself if you're having fun Mm -hmm. and if you're not make a change, that's the biggest thing. Make the change. Absolutely. Well, let's get you out of here so you can go have some fun because I know you got some packing to do as well. You know me. I'll I'll wait till Monday. You know, <laughs> one hour. I'm like, oh my god, where are my shoes? Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah. Where where can people find you? Sandy D. Oh, like on on on, on the interwebs. Uh, <laughs> San Diego as well. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, here, <laughs> Invictus CrossFit. Uh, so Instagram is Del Spiegel. Mm-hmm. Um, they can find me on Twitter. I think my handle is the same. Okay. I am not on Twitter, but they can find me there. Mm-hmm. Um, same with Facebook. They can find me, but I don't ever. I'm Mostly like, active on Instagram. It's, it's Instagram. Find me on Instagram, but you can also find me on TikTok. Hey. <laughs> I've seen you and do some of the dance moves, <laughs> yes. and I'm like, my body doesn't move that way yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are some things that the, the people are doing with those dances on Instagram, oh, yeah. and I sit there, I'm like, never will my body like. <laughs> like <laughs> It's incredible. There's a ton Talk of about body awareness, like yeah. some dancers out there. It's it's awesome. For real. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. No, thank you. Guys. Had a blast. Guys, please check us out on Spotify now as well as Apple Podcast. Ooh. If you liked my conversation with Danny today, please rate, review, and subscribe. Share with your friends. And as always, stay on the hunt for who you've not yet become. Mm-hmm.